from the great Pacific Northwest. Today, I would like to share my experiences of growing vegetable seedlings in a garage. Maybe this pole lamp will provide enough light to grow the seedlings. It has a 17.5 watt LED bulb that generates 1,600 lumens of light. It is rated as a 5000K daylight bulb which is suitable for damp locations. This bulb is designed for residential lighting. If one only wants to grow some small seedlings for home use, this light is probably okay. But if one wants to grow larger seedlings, like these three week old seedlings, or these 25 day old seedlings, the plants become etiolated and gangly and weak. And one might be a little embarrassed to show these on YouTube. And when you transplant them out into a growing tank, one wonders whether the transplanting shock will kill the plants. Even if they survive, they will not grow as well as healthy seedlings. This encouraged me to build a portable bench with a grow light to raise my seedlings. The wooden frame from a discarded footstool was repurposed to become the frame of the seedling bench. White colored hardboard was fastened to the frame to become the floor of the bench. The bench dimensions were 23 inches long by 16 inches wide. Boards were fastened to the frame to support the light. The bench was covered with spun bonded polyester floating roll cover material. It will cause the temperature in the enclosure to be elevated by several degrees. And the white color will encourage reflection of light in the enclosure. The heart of this seedling bench is the grow light. The light is 17 inches long and is a Procyon 2.0 model which was generously donated by the Happy Leaf Company. This is a very efficient LED light which develops 70% red, 20% green, and 10% blue wavelength light. Looking underneath the light, we notice that there are no bulbs. The light is produced by these little electronic chips. All the light is projected downward in one direction as compared to a bulb which projects light from the whole 360 degree surface of the bulb, much of which is wasted if it cannot be properly reflected onto the plants. The light can be easily adjusted with cord locks. I like to keep the light about a foot above the seedlings. Of course, if the seedlings grow, then I can just simply raise the light. A simple timer may be used to turn the light on and off. 16 hours on and 8 hours off would be a good place to start and then you could adjust later if you need to. This light consumes 25 watts of 120 volt AC power supplied to a power supply which transforms the voltage down to 24 volts DC. This combined with an IP65 rating makes this light more safe to use than a 120 volt light, particularly where plants and nutrient solution are involved. The Happy Leaf light has a warm white appearance, whereas the pole light bulb has a cool daylight appearance. Let's grow some seedlings and see how this bench works. I have some one inch foam seedling blocks which are no longer being made, but they are similar to the Oasis seedling blocks. A dental pick was used to make small holes in the bottoms of the blocks. This isn't really necessary, but I just thought it might help the roots penetrate through the blocks. Now it's time to plant some seeds. First, lettuce will be planted. An envelope seeder was used to plant the seeds. The crease in the envelope singulates the seeds. A pencil is used to maneuver the seeds. Two seeds were planted per block. Next, pak choy was also seeded. Then, the seedling blocks were placed in a plastic tray. And water was added. After a while, the blocks became well moistened. Then, the seedling blocks were lightly misted to doubly ensure that the seeds were well moistened. Now, I need to point out that the municipal tap water in this area 
has a very alkaline pH of above 8 and contains chlorine, fluorine, and various other solutes and has an EC of 0.21 ms. So instead, I opted to use rain catchment water, which had a pH of about 6.5 and an EC of 0. Well, I'm sure there were some minor contaminants in the rainwater, but not enough to register on the EC meter. The seedling trays were placed on a heat mat and covered with expanded polystyrene to prevent heat loss. The heat mat temperature was set at 20 centigrade or 68 Fahrenheit. After about two days, the seeds were starting to germinate, so the expanded polystyrene was taken off of the trays. And one tray was placed on my new seedling bench. And the other tray was placed under the pole lamp. After a week, both trays looked similar. One week after planting seeds, one quarter to one half strength nutrient solution was added as needed by the plants. And even after another week, the seedlings in both trays looked pretty healthy. Seedlings of this size could be successfully transplanted, so at this point, both lighting systems have performed equally well. A few days later, and something seems to be changing. The seedlings that were under the pole lamp seem to be getting slightly etiolated. After only a few more days, the etiolation becomes more pronounced, while the procyon lighted plants are growing rapidly. Yes, at 21 days after planting, the seedlings under the procyon light are much happier than those under the pole lamp. After four more days, there is a clear difference with healthy and vigorous growth under the happy leaf procyon light, whereas the plants under the residential light are etiolated and weak. And when you transplant these seedlings, you get a happy plant or not very happy plants. Again, happy plants or not very happy plants. Since the light intensity PAR readings based upon my iPhone Photone app as well as temperatures were similar for both seedling batches, I believe the growth differences are due to light quality. Here is a diagram of the spectral distribution of light wavelengths emitted from the procyon light used in the seedling bench. The wavelength ratio was based upon ideal growth conditions for plants based upon Purdue University research. I don't have a spectral distribution for the pole light bulb, but it likely would be different than for the procyon light. After all, this bulb was designed for residential lighting and not plant growing. Although the residential light provided adequate light energy for the very early vegetative growth of these seedlings, the obvious lesson is that a seedling or growing bench should employ a lamp designed for plant growing. Well, I really like my seedling bench, and I was able to grow some nice seedlings of zinnias, marigolds, peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, onions, and cucumbers from my garden last summer. And after the seedlings were planted in the garden, I was able to repurpose the seedling bench to grow some nice greens. As a sidelight, there are two bottles with mint next to the bench to capture the otherwise wasted sidelight. And the mint plants look nice and healthy. A benefit of a raised bench is the extra storage space under the bench. Of course, I probably couldn't find something that was hidden under there. Now, it's about time for the light to turn off, so I better get out of here. Mm -hmm.